This is an open letter to CyberConnect2 regarding feedback for the upcoming game, Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm 3. I have long been a fan of the Ultimate Ninja games, and I have also found enjoyment in the first two Storm titles. I could not find enjoyment in Generations due to the kind of play that the game allowed, encouraged, and or catered to. In this video, I will address the things that I feel are abusive or just not done entirely correctly. The Subbar I don't believe that the subbar is beyond saving. While I would prefer to have the old substitution system back with a few tweaks here and there, I understand that CyberConnect 2 has made a decision to keep the subbar, so instead of wasting time by asking for something that I don't believe will ever be done, I will shift my focus toward possible tweaks for the subbar. I would like to repeat that I would prefer the old substitution mechanic with some variations, but I understand CyberConnect 2's actions as being representative of maintaining the new substitution mechanic, so I will attempt to work within the limits of practicality. The subbar has created a very complicated system that has no easy answer. The subbar allows easy use of the substitution mechanic for all players, but it does so with several important changes. Limited substitutions. The first drawback to the subbar is the limited number of available substitutions. While this is necessary to implement because of the ease of the substitution ability, it creates a limited defense. If a player is caught in a melee combo, it's almost always a better option to substitute out of the combo than to take the whole thing. While this is not necessarily a bad thing on its own, when it interacts with other aspects of the game, the substitutions feel very limited and sometimes just completely useless. In Generations there are too many easy, and not always purposefully done, ways to punish a substitution due to another major change in the second drawback to the substitution mechanic. Substitution Vulnerability the lack of safety that a substitution gives comes from the removal of substitution invincibility. Not only are substitutions now severely limited, but they don't even guarantee safety anymore since the attacker can maintain their position through several difficult to escape means, such as chakra dash cancels, infinite tilts, support characters that punish substitutions and advantageous melee combos. I believe that the lack of invincibility from a substitution sometimes gives too great of an advantage to the attacker without the attacker exerting much effort to gain it. I think editing should be done to several characters' tilt attacks to prevent them from infinitely repeating them in such a way that they can be used to consistently attack and punish substitutions at the same time. I think editing should also be done to combos so that substituting players are always able to move and perform actions after they perform substitutions, and so that players who fall out of combos are always able to move and perform actions while they are out of the combo. Substitution Restrictions in Generations, substitutions cannot be performed during a few different actions, dashing, chakra dashing, and ninja moving. While ninja moving may be somewhat practical to restrict, and I can understand where the thought process was in restricting substitutions during chakra dashes, I don't think it's fair for dashes, which are already very limited in application, to be further weakened by removing the ability to substitute during them. I believe that this is especially harmful when compared to other actions that are able to be substituted out of, such as Jutsus, Ultimate Jutsus, and Team Ultimate Jutsus. Dashes are already susceptible to interruptions from guard support, they're vulnerable to all chakra actions, and then on top of it, they can't be substituted out of. I think that dashes should gain some kind of benefit, whether it's a slight increase in their speed or homing ability, to make them worth using outside of just switching a ground combo into an air combo. I also believe that Jutsus, Ultimate Jutsus, and Team Ultimate Jutsus should not always be able to be substituted out of. When a player uses a physical Jutsu or Ultimate Jutsu, such as Rasengan or Chidori, they should be vulnerable from the beginning of the attack to the end of the attack if they never touch the opposing player. Or support character. If the attack lands on a character in some way, if it hits the character, is guarded by the character, or is substituted by the character, the attacking player should then instantly regain the ability to use a substitution for the duration of the attack's length, or the cooldown time. This would still allow physical jutsus, or ultimate jutsus, to be used during combos or for pressure, but it would prevent them from being able to be mindlessly thrown out without the ability for an opponent to punish them. In the case of Sage Mode Naruto, where Naruto can use his or Sin Gun, hit a blocking opponent, and then almost instantly start a combo on them before they can do anything, players who anticipate the attack have an opportunity to deal damage and prevent the pressure. 
characters with ranged jutsus and ultimate jutsus should be vulnerable in the same way, not allowing substitutions if the attack does not hit the opponent or they do not substitute it, making the player susceptible to attacks like Kakashi's Kamui. I believe that doing this would allow characters to use their entire arsenal of abilities to their full potential, and in doing so, add a little more depth to the fighting. Melee Full melee combos can only be done for a small period of time and are susceptible to many different factors. One of the things that I liked about Storm 2 was that damaging melee combos could be done at any time. While the substitution mechanic in Storm 2 allowed abuses, it also allowed melee to be unrestricted. When I played Storm 2, I found enjoyment in using characters like Orochimaru, Shikamaru, Jiraiya, and others who could use melee combos and connect them into their ultimate jutsus with the opponent's only way out being a substitution, which was difficult to perform on an ultimate jutsu and proper melee use. This kind of ability allowed big damage to come at any time in the game through a certain level of skill and knowledge. With a subbar, melee combos like the ones in Storm 2 are always guaranteed to fail if the opponent has substitutions left in their bar, which most of the time they do. Essentially, melee knowledge like that has been almost abandoned since the opportunity for large and damaging attacks rarely come, and when they do, the ability to land them is many times not available. I don't think that this can be changed while maintaining the subbar, but I see it as a drawback to the new substitution system that I wanted to voice. Melee doesn't mean anything until the opponent is out of substitutions, and even then, support characters are liable to mess things up and still prevent big damage from coming. A possible way to mold melee into something a little bit more desirable is to shorten the length of melee combos and increase the damage per hit and possibly overall. This way, even if a full combo does not go through, melee would have been worth the damage that was dealt considering the difficulty that it can sometimes take to get into a position to use melee. In Generations, many players choose to just use a throw since they do a fair amount of damage, allow them to get away, can cause a strike back, can lead to air combos or other ways to deal additional damage, and are not often substituted. If melee strength was increased, players might be more likely to use melee instead of relying so heavily on throws and running away. These things might also be helped by the following implementation regarding support characters. The Support System I believe that the support system needs to have a reworking. As it is now, support characters play an incredibly important role in the game. I believe their role is far too large. While playing the game, people will use support characters to get themselves out of situations and simultaneously turn the tables on their opponents without any drawbacks. Characters like Hidan, Anko, and others when used as support will lock down their opponent for so long that the player using them is able to create easy throw setups, combo setups, guard break setups, jutsu setups, ultimate jutsu setups without any effort, especially when these characters can be called in at any time, such as when a player is being hit. I suggest removing the ability to use a support character when being hit. Doing this will eliminate some of the abuses that support characters bring and allow players who have eliminated their opponent's substitutions to have a real opportunity to deal significant damage without also having to worry about support characters preventing them from being able to get in even after their previous work of eliminating substitutions. This will also help to wear down an opponent's subbar by forcing them to substitute instead of allowing support instead while it would still allow more experienced players to use support characters effectively before they end up being attacked, which in my eyes is better play. I also believe that some support characters should still have a small increase in the startup time of their jutsus when they are called in, while the player is not performing a melee action when they call them in. During this small startup time, the support character should be more vulnerable, allowing an attacking player to have an opportunity to hit the support character so that defensive, get out of jail free support play becomes slightly less effective. As it is in generations, people rely on defensive support characters to do a lot of work for them in close range, allowing easy escapes. My goal is not to completely eliminate defensive uses of support characters, but to make them a bit more fair. Chakra dashing. One of the biggest problems with generations in my eyes is the chakra dash. In generations, counterplay is still the main playstyle of the game. In Storm 2, 
counterplay would be done after a substitution with jutsus, throws, and ultimates by many players, but those things could be overcome because of the lenient substitution mechanic and through proper melee use. Playing generations is different, but still reliant on countering. Now, instead of using substitution attacks, players use counter chakra dashes. What typically happens is one player will perform a chakra dash, or an action that leaves them somewhat vulnerable like using shuriken or other projectiles, and the opposing player will either jump out of the way and chakra dash to the other player, jump and guard the incoming chakra dash and use a counter chakra dash, or guard on the ground and use a counter chakra dash. The way that chakra dashes work has encouraged this play to become the standard for a lot of melee playstyles, and since counter chakra dashing allows the player to start their combo first, they can force a substitution out of the attacking player, which punishes aggression. This is a hard problem to fix, and I have to admit, I don't know how this could be alleviated with the current gameplay mechanics. Eliminating the ability to counter chakra dash could create an imbalance that gives attackers too much of an advantage, and leaving things the same gives defensive players too much of an advantage. It's a really hard decision. The Guard Chakra dashes also contribute to another style of abusive play in the game. Since chakra dashes cause a significant amount of guard damage to the opposing player per use, some players decide to base their playstyle around breaking their opponent's guard and using powerful attacks during that vulnerability. This play is also very hard to deal with when you factor in different support characters like Hidan, Anko, Young Gara, and more. I suggest a slight increase in the strength of the guard and or a slight decrease in the guard breaking strength of the chakra dash and possibly melee as well. As the game is now, the guard mechanic is a bit too weak, and once a player gains an advantage in attacking the opponent's guard, it is incredibly hard for the opponent to have an opportunity to escape the situation, especially if their character has a slower melee speed than their opponent's, because the opponent will have an advantage in their ability to pressure the slower character with chakra dashes and fast acting melee attacks. I think a few things could help to fix this problem. The first possible way would be to make melee able to beat chakra dashes consistently, instead of sometimes trading with them. This could result in a few problems though, such as a player randomly using melee, and their opponent not being able to punish them reliably if they don't have a ranged attack or something with more priority than the opponent's melee attacks. Another possibility to fix the problem would be to speed up or slow down the first hit of every character's melee combo so that they all become the same. This would even out the playing field speed-wise. But the only problem with that is that some characters would lose their unique feel. An alternative way to help level the playing field when it comes to melee speed could be to add a sort of melee clashing feature where both characters would repel away from each other if their melee attacks hit each other, effectively resetting the playing field. This clashing feature could be a replacement for editing all the melee speeds as long as slower melee attacks could cause clashes during a certain point in their startup. That would help out slower characters, but still retain their unique melee speed. Faster attacks would not be able to clash in their startup, and slower attacks would have priority once they became active, which would allow slower characters to have a chance to beat faster attacks if they started first. Doing so would allow slower attacks to be used effectively in situations outside of just landing a chakra dash first. Awakenings Awakenings have been a major annoyance for many players of the games for what is probably an obvious reason. They can be incredibly effective and can easily destroy an opponent. One of the biggest examples of this is Naruto's Six-Tailed Awakening. Many players will use some of their items and then use their awakening so that while they are in their awakened state, not only do they gain amazingly effective abilities, but they also stack on power boosts that make their power ridiculous to fight against. With a guard that breaks easily and limited abilities in avoiding these attacks, awakenings can often steal the game away from a significantly better player. While having a comeback mechanic can keep things exciting, the awakenings can be far too effective for some characters, even without added stat boosts. I know that I, along with many other players, would greatly appreciate awakenings being toned down a bit. At the absolute very least, Preventing awakenings from gaining benefits from items would be a great way to begin acknowledging the issue. In some of the recent gameplay from Storm 3, 
it has been seen that instant awakenings deplete the chakra bar, limiting the amount of chakra that a player can use for a short time. I really like what was done with this, and so far, I think it's a cool addition to the game. I also saw the ability to throw an opponent in an awakening and use ultimate jutsus on awakened characters. I like these things for characters who have used the instant awakening, but not for characters who have health-based awakenings. I don't think that allowing the throw to work on health-based awakenings is fair, and ultimate jutsus working on those awakenings seem like a little bit too much as well, especially when you consider the weakness of some of the large awakenings and the opponent's ability to use support characters to set up attacks. The Team System The team system of the recent Storm games is completely unfair. In Storm 2 and Generations, certain teams receive boosts in their stats the strength of the team ultimate, the recharge rate of support characters, and the fill rate of the support gauge. This mechanic creates an imbalance for certain characters that don't have access to as many choices of teams or don't have access to team choices that give more desirable boosts or support attacks. For example, members of the Akatsuki have the ability to use Hidan and Pain support while also gaining a stat boost for doing so. Hidan and Pain support are incredibly strong support characters, and adding stat boosts on top of that make an Akatsuki team extremely powerful. Another problem with the team system is that it can stifle creativity by putting people with unique character choices at an inherent disadvantage against people with teams, and that's not even factoring in how some teams can have very good support attacks on top of their stat advantage. Another problem is that the teams do not always make a lot of sense compared to others, such as teams based off of physical traits or worn accessories. The selection of what teams make it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense either. For instance, why is there a team for ninjas who wear masks, but not a team for teachers who were killed during the series? Why is there a team for ninjas that wear glasses, but not a team for ninja who fight with ranged attacks? Why is Tamari not included in the team Ones of Wind Nature. The team is just Asuma and Naruto, even though Tamari fits the theme. Why is there no Geniuses or Geniuses of Hard Work team? The list is of course greater than that. I don't really have a problem with trying to reward people for choosing teams, but I don't think the system is fair in its current form, and I wanted to voice that since I don't think many other people ever acknowledge it. I think a better reward for using related teams should be special intros or outros where they make some kind of acknowledgement of their relation. For Team 7, consisting of Naruto, Sakura, and Kakashi, Naruto and Sakura could be bickering and Kakashi could be in the background reading one of his books or he could be trying to break them up before the fight starts. Other character specific issues. Young Kakashi should not be able to interrupt characters attacking his guard with his Chidori and his tilt. Haku's tilt should be replaced by something more useful. If a new attack is not going to be made, the current one could be made useful by the following changes. Additional hit stun on the attack, significantly less recovery time, significantly less startup time for the attack, those are just a few options. Tsunade's Jutsu should become more standardized in its damage to the guard. Sometimes it can instantly break a full guard when paired with a chakra dash, and sometimes it leaves the full guard in the red state after being paired with a chakra dash. The hitboxes on some throws and physical jutsus should be edited to prevent them from enveloping the entire character. Sometimes a player who's using a throw or physical jutsu can hit another player who is chakra dashing into them from behind. It appears as if the entire character is the hitbox, and I think that should be changed. Hidan's jutsu and jutsus like it when used as support are far too abusive. They allow a player to lock down their opponent far too easily and for far too long, and if they remain in the game, they desperately need to be toned down in their length and the startup speed. Akamaru should not perform chakra dashes with Kiba. With Akamaru, Kiba essentially gets two chakra dashes, which prevents opponents from having the ability to escape from him. It's just too great of an advantage. Karen's Jutsu, when used as support, should not do any damage. The stat effects alone are useful enough. Pain's Jutsu, when used as support, should have an increased startup time, both in the air and on the ground. Masked Man's Ultimate Jutsu needs to have its invincibility completely removed. Masked Man's Jutsu needs to have its startup invincibility removed, 
and should probably have an added cooldown time. There should be a rebalancing of items, specifically explosive tags and bombs. These things are extremely powerful, and they can allow a player to easily control the pace of the match by preventing aggression from their opponent or gaining the ability to have a strike back almost at will. The only way to keep the explosive tags and bombs in the game while truly balancing their strength would be to give them to all characters and give them the same amount. Otherwise, explosive tags and bombs do not seem to be able to be balanced out unless their ability to interrupt melee was removed and their ability to gain a strike back was removed as well. The frenzy pill should be completely removed. Features and presentation tweaks. A replay feature for non-ranked games, maybe even an ability to save replays of any match onto a save file, similar to what was done in Dragon Ball Raging Blast 2. A penalty for high disconnection rates, or at least a win for the player who is disconnected on. If it's possible, a win should be awarded to the player who did not disconnect if they had a health advantage. An enhanced lobby mode. This lobby mode could include the ability to text chat or the ability to select to only watch matches being played. An ability to select which stats to display on your ninja info card. An enhanced training mode with an auto guard feature, which would allow people to actually understand which combos would definitely work and which ones were escapable without substitution use. A brief tutorial to introduce players to the different mechanics of the game, such as uh, ninja move canceling, comboing jutsus, comboing ultimate jutsus, using the new awakening abilities, etc. would also be greatly appreciated. The sound that happens when a player tries to call in an unavailable support character should be removed or toned down. This is a major annoyance that has been present for a very long time. A player bashing the support buttons will create an annoying sound that is capable of drowning out the game audio. This is such an easily fixable issue for such a huge annoyance that there doesn't seem to be much reason to not address it. The Ultimate Jutsu viewer should have the ability to use different costumes. In generations, Haku's Ultimate Jutsu could not be viewed with his mask on. And finally, the removal of the ring out feature or serious edit of it. The ring out should not be able to be initiated by explosive items or chakra projectiles that can cause strike backs. While this list is not entirely complete, it addresses some of the biggest concerns that I have with the gameplay mechanics, and I hope that it at least provides a bit of thought, and hopefully, something from my suggestions is seen and makes it into the game, whether it's a big thing or a small thing. Thank you for your time, I hope to see a great addition to the Storm series. Hey everybody, this is Beelit, and thank you for watching my open letter. If you would like to send your own suggestions to CyberConnect2, in the description of this video, I will have the link to their suggestions page, their English one, and you can send your suggestions right there. Um, I will be sending my suggestions, the actual, the, the text that you saw is in a list. So, I'm going to be sending a uh, text version of my suggestions, and I'm also going to be sending them this video on Twitter, uh, maybe they have a Facebook page. I'll, I'll see if they have a Facebook page. And I'll also put the URL to this video in the suggestions thing. So hopefully they see something of these suggestions and I, I, get, I get to be sure that my message actually got to them. So that's the point of this video. And uh, yeah, if you guys would like to send your own suggestions, go to the description. You can see their Twitter. You can see their suggestions page, which is probably the best place to go. Um, if you want to send them this video as well, go right ahead. If, if you think that these are the things that you actually want, and you think that some of the things that I said in this video have merit, or some of the, suge some of the suggestions that I offered had merit, then go ahead and send them this video so you agree with it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys take the time out to send CyberConnect2 your own suggestions, because... If you don't, then you have no right to complain when the game comes out and it's not what you want. So, I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.